We'll turn your Bibles to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject of true bread. I talked to you this morning about living a pure, holy life, the salt covenant, and how important it is that after we're saved, that we live a consecrated life. If you want your prayers answered, if you want to see great things from God, if you want your life blessed, then walk in the light as he is in the light. Live a sanctified life. The blood of Jesus will constantly cleanse you. You'll experience healings. You'll experience answered prayer. You'll experience miracles in your life. But tonight I want to talk to you about the true bread. It takes bread for the natural man to survive, and it also takes bread for the spiritual man to survive. I thought about how blessed the United States of America is, and we have all kinds of bread in America to choose from. We have enriched bread. We have fortified bread. We have multi multigrain bread. We have sourdough bread. But no matter how tasty or how enriched that bread may be, it won't do you any good until you eat that bread. You can look at that loaf of bread. You can dream about that loaf of bread. You can put it in the oven and smell that loaf of bread, but it won't do you any good until you eat that bread. Amen. Look with me at John 6, 31. The people came to Jesus one day, and look at what they say. They said, Our Father did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Church, we need the bread of God in order to sustain our spirit man, the spiritual life that we live. Jesus is the bread of life, and we should be hungry for more and more of Jesus. Jesus is not just some side dish. He is the main course. He is the most important thing in your life. He is the most important thing for you and for your family and your every need in order for you to survive. My subject tonight the true bread, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the anointed singing and how we've already worshipped you and, Lord, how your people have rejoiced and how we've had good testimonies today. And, Lord, we praise you that you're in our midst. And we thank you, Lord, for showing up, speaking to us. And, God, I ask you once again to let me preach your word with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let my tongue... Be like the writer's pen, Lord. Let it speak the word of God. And let your word split soul and spirit asunder. Let miracles happen. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. We live in a culture where people consider bread a side dish. Nobody in America goes to a restaurant or goes to a steakhouse to eat the bread. The bread is not considered the main dish. It's what we call a side dish. But when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he spoke those words to people who saw that bread was the main dish. Now, throughout the Old Testament, we see references to bread. When the two angels visited Abraham, bread was such a vital part of their meal that the Bible says that they did break unleavened bread and they ate it. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God fed them with manna, bread from heaven, which sustained them. In the New Testament, we see Jesus frequently breaking bread with his disciples. Jesus fed the multitude. He used five loaves and two fishes, so the bread was the main thing. The last meal that the Lord Jesus shared with his disciples, the bread, was the main dish. To them, this was not a communion meal. It was supper. And the only thing on the menu to eat was bread 
because bread was the main thing. In the book of Acts, the early church, they went house to house breaking bread together because bread was the main course. So in that culture, Jesus' words, I am the bread of life, I am the true bread, that statement carried a profound impact upon those people. What he was saying is, I am the most important thing in your life. I'm, I'm preaching this and I'm thinking about Matthew 6, where Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the stuff that you will ever need, it will be added unto you. Hallelujah. Jesus is the most important thing in your life. Jesus said, I am the source of life to you and your family. Jesus said, I'm not just some side dish in your life. Church, we should have a desperate hunger for more and more of Jesus. Just like the manna was sent to sustain the children of Israel in the wilderness, Jesus is the bread of life for us today. He's the word that was made flesh. This is the word that I hold in my hand. This is the word that I preach. It all goes back to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above. I love that. All, above all you could ever ask or think, according to the power that's working in you. Have you been eating the bread lately? A woman came to Jesus one day, and she had a daughter that was sick, and uh, she was possessed of a devil. She was a Syrophoenician woman. She didn't even have covenant. And she said, Lord, heal my daughter that's grievously vexed of the devil. He said, you're asking for the children's bread. He said, true, Lord, but even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. What she was saying is, Lord, if all I can get is a crumb from your table, that's enough healing power in a crumb to take care of my need. Hallelujah. And church, God's not feeding us crumbs. We got 66 books, and every promise of God is yes, and the amen is spoken by us to bring glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the bread of life. And just like that manna was sent to sustain the children of Israel, Jesus is the bread for us today. And a lot of people in the church, they have ruined their appetite for bread, the bread of life, because they have fed themselves junk food and they have filled up on the things of the world. We need to understand who we are and who we represent and what's available to us. And we need to to clean off the table of our lives, and we need to put Jesus in the center place of our lives. Jesus deserves the rightful place in each and every one of us, and he should never be a second dish. He deserves the first place in every life because Jesus is the main dish. Hallelujah. If you preach, your mouth should be full of bread. If you sing, your mouth should be full of bread. If you play a musical instrument, you see where I'm going. No matter what you're doing in every aspect of your life, your mouth should be full of bread, full of the Word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Some people treat the word like they're sitting in a restaurant. They said, I'll take that, but I don't want any of that asparagus. Give me some potatoes with some, some of that gravy on it. I love that, but I don't want any of those string beans. We got people, they, they think that this book is, you can just come to church and pick and choose. No, God said, put the whole course out there. Put, spread the whole table, amen. 
Because on his table, there's salvation. On his table, glory to God, there's bread for sanctification. On his table, there's bread for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. On his table, there's bread for divine healing. On his table, there's bread for anything and everything that you need. Because this book points to one man from Genesis to Revelation, there's a scarlet thread, and it points to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He's the bread of life. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. I believe today that people are hungry for truth, for the real thing. I'm of a persuasion that if you will preach the gospel, God will give you what you preach. He told me that a long time ago. He said, I'll give you what you preach. Amen. But without the bread of life, we have nothing. Nothing to preach and nothing to set the captive free with. We have nothing to break the devil's power, to heal broken lives, and to, to, to help people that are hurting. We live in a hurting world, and we need some men and some women that will stand up with salt on their life, seasoned with salt, a message from God where they've heard from God and they can stand and break the bread and God's blessings begin to flow out to people. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, the natural man, he has a tendency to pursue whatever he desires. And so it is with the church. If we're not careful, we'll become carnal. The church always moves toward its hunger. And our spiritual atmosphere can never change until our appetite for God increases more and more. Have you eaten any of this bread today on your own? Do you eat this bread each and every day of your life? We have Bible reading guides, and I hope tomorrow and part of the next day to get along with God and catch up a little bit. Amen. I don't get behind very often, but sometimes I, I, I'm so busy doing things, I, I read my Bible through every year. I want to eat the bread. Matter of fact, Jeremiah, my, my brother in the Lord, the prophet, Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. He said, I'm eating spiritual bread. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Jesus comes along and says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. But he said, if you're going to be effective in my kingdom, you got to eat the bread. you got to eat the bread of life. And when he was having that last meal... He said, take, eat this bread that represents my body, which is broken for you. Hallelujah. Thank God his body was broken so our body could be healed. Thank God his body was broken so we could walk in victory. Thank God he did it all for you. He did it all for me. He's the bread of life. Go on and praise him because you've had a taste just like the psalmist said. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Who am I preaching to? Have you had a taste of that true bread that come down from heaven? When, when the psalmist got a hold of it, he said, I want more, and I want more, and I want more. And Jesus said, if you will hunger and thirst after righteousness, I will fill you. You don't have to worry about the preacher doing it. You don't have to worry about the praise team doing it. You don't have to worry about the deacons deacon it out to you. I will fill you. Go on and praise them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So right now in this service, <laughs> you have a chance for more of him. Do you want more of God? Then ask. He said, you have not because you ask not. What do you need from God? Now, the Bible tells us in uh, Corinthians, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 2 and 20, somewhere along about there. He says, Jesus has been made unto us wisdom and righteousness 
and sanctification and redemption. Well, if he's been made unto me wisdom, why do I need wisdom at certain times? He is my wisdom. But sometimes we lack wisdom in a particular situation. I'm going through something, Pastor. I, I, I don't know what to do. Go get some bread. <laughs> Woo! Get, get lost in this book. And I got some books if you need one of them on, on God's promises. And start eating those promises. Start eating that bread. Amen. And, and I, I don't know what to do. God says, don't ask the pastor. Well, I'll give you some good counsel, I hope, right from the bread. <laughs> Amen. Some, somebody told me, said, I, I need some marriage counseling. And, and I, I remember this story one person told me, said they went to their pastor and said, I, I need some good marriage counseling. And the pastor told him, said, I want you to go home, you and your husband. I want you to get on your knees, and I want you to read the fifth chapter of Matthew. Don't you get up until you read it and you understand it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Do you want to be blessed? Then do what Jesus said, do in the Beatitudes. Eat the bread. Get a word from God, and that bread will sustain you. But let's look at what Brother James, the brother of Jesus, said. Do you need wisdom from God? Look at James 1 and 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He's talking about a particular situation. What are you going through? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth liberty to all and upbraid it not. That means God will not rebuke you. Upbraid it not. He will not rebuke you for asking. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that waiteth is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed with the wind. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. God deals in faith. We deal in greenbacks down here. Amen. That's how you get things in our economy. But in God's economy, you don't buy it. Jesus paid for it. All it takes to appropriate it is faith. Hallelujah. The devil will come along and say, you don't have any faith. But Jesus said, if you got faith as a grain, you see that mustard seed as a grain of a mustard seed. You shall ask of God, and if you will ask and not doubt and not waver, it will be given unto you. Amen. Glory to God. The church is struggling for something they've already got. Jesus is our wisdom. He's our righteousness. He's our sanctification, and he's our faith. Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When the devil tells me you don't have enough faith for it, I just tell him I had enough faith to get out of your clutches. And if I'll keep pressing on, and if I'll just keep going toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, pretty soon I'll be standing in my tomorrow. And I'll be standing there in victory. I'll be standing there in the Lord Jesus Christ because he always causes me to triumph. I can't go under for going over. I can't go down for going up. He lifted me. Love lifted me. One day, I got a lift. Amen. It wasn't a face lift. It was a faith lift. And I placed my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He reached way down in the Mary clay, and he lifted me up, and he set my feet on a solid rock. You think I'd ever ready batteries got energy? Glory to God, I've got the Holy Ghost, and he just keeps me going and going and going and going and going. Hallelujah. That's life in bread. Eat the bread of life. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Whatever you need, ask of God. And the only condition that has to be in order is that you got to have faith when you ask. This is the order. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. If you want divine order in your life, if you want wisdom, you have to come to God and you have to believe. Amen. That's God's divine order. And if you will believe, Jesus told a group one day, he said, if you will believe, you shall see the glory of God. God gives liberally, church. He never withholds anything from a heart that is hungry 
for more of him. Oh, sometimes we just for more, we want more of the stuff. I, I quit seeking stuff a long time ago. I, I found out all I had to do was seek him. I found out that God can get me anywhere he wants me. I mean, if he wants me in any position, I don't have to fight to get there. All I have to do is hear his voice and walk right through the door. He is the door. Amen. Let me preach a little while. R.W. Uh, uh, Schambach. He had a saying. He said, you don't have any problems. Keep shouting. Keep rejoicing. Keep looking up. Remember, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in Jesus. And he told a story. I heard him one day tell a story of where he got that from. And I, I've told this before. I love to tell it. Some of you haven't heard it. He said there was a man. He was rich. He said, I mean, he was filthy rich. He was very wealthy. And, and he got sick. And he ended up in the hospital. He lost his wealth. He lost his health. He lost his wife. He lost everything. And he's in the hospital. And he's dying. And a priest comes in there dressed in black, smoking a cigar. He come in there and read him his last rites. I was on cigarettes this morning. I'm on cigars tonight. I told you, you got to have some salt. On the sacrifice. Amen. I, I, I talked to, I don't think Brother Kyle would mind me telling this at all. I talked to Brother Kyle Ellis this afternoon. He said, Pastor, when I came here, he, he said, I, uh, I, I, I'm still smoking my cigarettes. He said, but after about a week of, he's talk, I was talking to him about this sermon, some of it, about this bread. He said, after about a week of hearing all those scriptures and, and being in this place with all this godliness, he said, I tried to smoke one of them. I couldn't stand the taste of it. Amen. He said, I laid them down. Amen. He said, I knew it was wrong all the time. He said, something just kept talking to me. He said, but the Lord delivered me. Let me get back to my man. Amen. He's in the hospital. The, pre the preacher comes through. He's smoking a cigar. He came in there. His man was Catholic, and he read him his last rites. And the preacher turned and walked back out the door. He said, about the time that preacher walked back out the door, that priest walked out the door, said another priest walked in through the wall. Said he wasn't dressed in black. He was dressed in white. Said, and he didn't come through the door. He came through the wall. He said, he walked over to where I was in the bed. He said, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. He said, what you mean I don't have any problems? He said, I've lost my wealth, I've lost my health, I've lost my marriage, I've lost everything, and the priest was in here and just read me my last rites, and you tell me I don't have any problems? He said, that priest dressed in white said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, and you don't have any problems, I've come to heal you. He said, he reached out and touched me, Brother Shambach, and he turned and walked back through the wall. He said, I got out of that bed, I got in there, I was shaving, and, and I was combing my hair, I got a shower, and got my clothes on. Said the nurse coming out, said, get back in that bed. Don't you know the priest was in here and just read you your last rites? He said, that's all right, lady. Said the time he walked out, that priest walked out, was dressed in black. Said another priest dressed in that was what dressed in white, and he read me my first rites all over again, and I'm getting out of this place. Hallelujah. Go on, praise him. He said, Brother Shambach said, why didn't he come through the door like that priest dressed in black? Brother Shambach said, he doesn't need to come through the door because he is the door. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's the door. He's the living water. He's the resurrection and the life. And he's the bread that came down from heaven. Amen. A lot of people are satisfied, you know, with just regular salvation. And there are others that are satisfied. They want the sanctified life. And then there are people that want to go on to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the only thing I'm satisfied with in my Christian walk is the fact I've never been satisfied. There's more. There's more bread. I love to break the pages of this book. Jensen Franklin, he, he, he was sick as a young 
young boy, grew up in my hometown, and he had, uh, his face was so disfigured as a teenager with, with acne and all, he went in his room, he didn't even want to go out, and he took scriptures, he took the bread, and he put it all around the room. He said, I read them, and I read them, I read them, and I read them, the healing scriptures. He said, then I took one of them off the wall, I chewed it up, and I ate it. Hallelujah. God healed him. Why? Because he was eating the bread of life. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is the main course. He's the main thing. He is the bread of life. Amen. He should be the main thing at church, and he should be the main thing in our homes. He should be the main thing when I go to bed. He should be the main thing when I wake up. He's the main thing, and I start, I always wake up singing a song. The psalmist said he put a new song in my heart. Amen. Do you have a song? I tell you what, if the devil can't take your joy, if he can't take your song, he can't keep you goods. Amen. Just keep rejoicing. Just keep shouting. Just keep eating the bread of life. His name is Jesus. Amen. I'm a man that loves to praise God. Most of y'all know that. And, and there are some times, you know, that we have heartfelt praise. But there are times we sing and shout and we praise God. And that's just not the way we feel. Amen. That, there are times, however, when we come and the order of the service goes and we just got, get a mini rapture and the song is hot and the praise is hot and we're just worshiping God. They're called the refreshings of the Spirit. I, I love that. But make no mistake about it. That will not sustain you in your Christian walk. It was never intended to. You will grow spiritually weak and anemic if you think that church is a shout, a song, and a praise. You will never know the master until you spend some time in his word along with him in the secret place of your prayer closet. There is no prayer, no substitute for prayer and study of God's word. Amen. I love to praise him. I, I, I hear some people say, we've had three services in our church, and not, the preacher didn't get a preach. I'll tell you what's going on now. They got a whole lot more flesh than they got word going on. Amen. We need the bread. We need the word of God. If the Holy Ghost breaks out in here and I don't get to preach, I promise you I'm going to give you about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to give you something. Amen. I'm going to give you some bread. I'm going to give you the word to sustain you. When you hit the storms tomorrow, thank God for the shout. Thank God for the praise. I'm a praiser. I love to praise him. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, when I get out there tomorrow where the rubber meets the road, I'm going to need some bread. I'm going to need the word of God that will sustain me through the storms of life. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. He's the bread that came down from heaven. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. So let me just show you what the secret of the early church was. It was not their music program. It was not their worship. No, they were not the major things. I'll show it to you. Look at Acts 6 and 4. The apostle said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer. And what? And to ministry of the word. When I was first saved, God woke me up. I mean, I'm brand new. He said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. I couldn't even go back to sleep. I tried and I tried for about 45 minutes. Finally, I got up. I'm brand new, man. I'm a brand new Christian. And I went to Genesis. I went to the beginning. He said, in the beginning was the word. So I went to the beginning. I did. I went all the way through this Bible. And I couldn't find it. But I knew it was God. I said, God, I know you're talking to me. I know that's in the Bible somewhere. Where is it, Lord? And the same voice spoke to me. He said, turn to the book of John. Put John 1 verse 1 up there. In the beginning was the word. He said, turn to the book of John. I thought I had to go all the way through the book of John. In the beginning was the Word. 
Where it was with God, the Word was God. It goes on to say the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14 said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I said, God, I was taught that in Sunday school. What does that mean to me? I, I know Jesus is the Word. God spoke to me just like I'm talking to you. Take it as a word from God. Learn my word. And from that moment to this, I've been memorizing it. I've been hiding it in my heart. The psalmist did, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The early church, the apostles, look at Acts 6 and 4. said, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to ministry of the word. Faith grows by reading the word. Faith grows by meditating upon God's Word. And most of all, faith thrives in an atmosphere of prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. I pray, but I don't always speak. Sometimes I just stop, and I open the book, and I say, God, do you have a word for me? I don't open it like that. I've got a systematic way that I do it. I read it through. I don't want to miss anything. All of them, are, yes. Every promise God made, every bit of it's good, amen. You can start reading, this one begat this one, this one begat that one. It doesn't bother me a bit. It's hard to go through it, but I read through it every year. Because if I just keep on reading pretty soon, I'm going to find Jesus Christ, the bread of life, somewhere in there. Hallelujah. He's the bread that came down from heaven, and we need Jesus. Prayer has to do with the whole man. And God must have us in our entirety if we're to have God in his entirety. Man, this thing's sort of running along with this morning. What was the secret of the Apostle Paul and his relationship with the Lord? This great man of God, what was his secret? Paul was a man of position. He was an educated man. But listen to him after his encounter with Jesus Christ. Philippians 3 and 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them as dung, rubbish, that I may win Christ. Notice that phrase, that I may win Christ. The Lord had already revealed himself to Paul. He called him to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Paul had been caught up into the third heaven. He had been shown such revelation. He said it's not lawful for a man to even talk about such things. Even with all of that, Paul felt compelled to win Christ's heart, amen, and, and Christ's affections. I heard one of the camp meeting speakers, and I think I shared it earlier. He, he said, he, he was quoting the scriptures to the Lord. It says that we may, it's in John chapter 17, it's the Lord's intercessory prayer, that, that we may be one, that they may be one, Father, even as we are one. I in thou, and thou in me, that they may be one in us, and that the world may know that thou hast loved them. <laughs> Woo! As thou hast loved me. He said, Lord, I see it in the scriptures. You love me just as much as you love Jesus. Why don't you trust me? Why don't, why don't you give me more revelation? Why don't you give me more things? He said, because I can't trust you with more right now. And that's been one of my constant prayers. God, help me to get to the place in my life that you can trust me with more of you. See, it's a pursuit. Paul said, I want to win Christ. And when you read 2 Timothy in his last letter, he says, For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against this day. Paul didn't just want to know him. Paul said, I've come to know him. I know him. A lot of preachers misquote that. They say, I know in whom I believe. That's not what the scriptures say at all. Paul said, I know him. I know whom I have believed. And I'm a persuaded man. When I met him on that road, he changed my life forever. 
no matter what I go through, no matter how hard the way may be, I'm pressing on, praise God, no matter how great the victory, I have decided one thing, I am going to know him. He's the bread. Go on and praise him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That I may win Christ. His entire li reason for living was to please the Lord and to win his heart. And not only that, he encouraged others in the same direction. Look at what he wrote to the church at Colossae. Colossians 1 and 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Christ became Paul's very life, his everything. How did that happen? How did he win Christ? He won him by the choices that he made. We win him by giving ourselves entirely to the Lord. Sometimes we get so busy with life, we get sidetracked. I thought about my own kids. I had to take them to dance rehearsals and piano lessons and ball games and tend all that stuff. And we get busy in our lives building and working and planning and just trying to make ends meet. And sometimes we get sidetracked, just like the bread is not a side dish. <laughs> we get sidetracked. And if we aren't careful, we forget that Jesus is not a side dish. Amen. He's not a side salad or something you can take or leave. But Jesus, he is the main dish. I can do with a lot of things in this life. I thank God for the house he gave me. But house or no house, I've got to have Jesus. I, I, I thank God for for the privilege to preach and the jobs he's given me in my lifetime, but job or no job, I've got to have Jesus. I love my wife, and she's a gift from God, but wife or no wife, I've got to have Jesus. Thank God for ministry. I love to minister, but ministry or no ministry, I've got to have Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're trying to get that, that education or that degree or build that business. And all those things are great, and they're all important somewhere in the scheme of life. But they're not the main thing, because Jesus is the main thing. And Jesus is the main dish. And don't ever treat him like some side dish either. And I can live without a lot of things in this world, but I cannot live without Jesus. He is the breath I breathe. He is the song I sing. He is the all in all. Hallelujah. He said, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Get in the church. Get in a good Bible-preaching church. Eat the bread of life. Glory to God. And God will not only build his church, he'll build your life. He'll build your home. He'll give you life, and that more abundantly. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hungry for more of Jesus? We all have to answer this question for ourselves. If you are, then spend more time with him. Jesus spent hours praying and talking to the Father. He taught people to pray to the Father. Our Father, which art in heaven. He taught them to praise him. Hallowed be thy name. He taught them to submit their will to his will. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Amen. He told the woman at Jacob's well to worship God in spirit and in truth. He prayed at Lazarus' tomb. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And all through the gospel, we see the Lord's complete devotion and obedience to the Father. Jesus was so completely devoted to pleasing his Father that he prays, standing in the shadow of the cross, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. But here's the part that really impacted my heart. When Philip said, 
Lord, show us the Father. Look at what Jesus said, John 14 and 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And thou sayest, Show us the Father. Amen. He had been with Philip all the time after he chose him. Yet Philip did not know him. He was with the very bread of life. How many times have you listened to a sermon and you've been with Jesus, yet you've not gone home and picked up this book and read its pages? Jesus said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Philip, if you have seen me, you've seen all that God is and all that God has. Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the very glory of God. Hallelujah. And if you and I want a right relationship with the Father, we're going to have to have a greater hunger for more and more of Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And if you want to know the Father intimately, you must know the Son intimately. And you cannot know the Son unless you eat the bread, the true bread. Is Jesus the love of your life? Is your love for him growing each and every day? Do you long for more and more of his presence? Do you seek to please him? Are you full of the bread of life? Or are you too full of other things? Jesus, this is what I want you to get is the main course in your life. He's not just some sad dish. The Bible says, let a man examine his own heart. I can't examine yours, and you can't examine mine. Thank God I'm, I'm not here to examine anybody's heart. I'm here to preach the Word of God and to break the bread and preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name, that he will give us all, myself included, a greater hunger for him. Yes. I need more of him. Like I said, the only thing I'm satisfied with in my Christian walk is the fact I've never been satisfied. There's more to God. Let us stand. This Hallelujah. is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me This is my daily bread This is my daily bread. Let's all just Your come into the altar. We got about ten minutes more. We can be with the Lord here. To me, just ask Him. And I, oh God, give me a greater hunger. You, have, you start I'm in the natural. For you. And then it becomes supernatural. You just start out in the flesh. I'm pretty sure you're over there in faith. I'm and he will feed you. you. And then he'll give you a hunger for more and more of the true bread, Jesus Christ. This is the air I breathe. Yes, Lord. This is the air I breathe. Lord, we need bread. 
Your holy presence. The true bread. Living. Jesus. In me. We're in perilous times, as the Apostle Paul said. We come to church to set our face. This is my daily bread. We come, Lord, to eat the bread of life. Break this is my daily bread. To get something that will sustain us, God. Your very word. Hallelujah. Spoken. Need your praying, Lord. To me. I need you. This is Jesus. my daily bread. I need fresh bread. This is my daily bread. I don't need some stale manna, but I've got good news. Heaven's bakery is always open. Bread. God's always cooking fresh bread. He'll Your choose a young man like Adam Fulton to preach his gospel. He'll preach a, choose a young man like David Johnson to preach his gospel. We're raising up preachers in this place. God's getting ready to move. Hallelujah. He's got some bread he wants to give out to some people that are hungry outside these walls. Got some bread, fresh manna for the church. Glory to God. And I 